guys, my name is Girish Bell, your host for today for Back to Basics, another Back to Basics for another week. It's just crazy how crazy it is that you are enjoying my show. Actually, you know what? I'm enjoying my show. So guys, today we have a guest. His name is RJ, RJ Sterlings to be exact. And he is an amazing guy. I spoke with him many, uh, I'm going to say a couple of weeks back on Clubhouse. How ironic is that, that I meet a lot of people on Clubhouse and great personalities and great celebrities, according to me. They're all great celebrities and all great guests on my show. So what he does is, it's going to be a little weird uh, show today, but uh, I need to explain here. So according to me, prisoners are citizens and citizens are prisoners. We'll, we'll get into the basis of that. But every one of those guys have a story and that's what rj sterlings is trying to do on his website we'll go get into the basics of that also so let's bring rj into my show and we'll congratulate him on all his work that he's doing right now rj thank you for coming on my show thank you as well i'm excited to be here with you absolutely thank you again so before we get into the basics of what you do and why did I say prisoners and citizens and everything else, what does back to basic uh, mean to you? So back to basics in the work that I do as a full-time employee in one of the largest maximum security prisons in the United States and uh, a passion after hours is getting back to the basics means when especially when it comes to working with offenders and ex-offenders is the simplicity of good and evil back to the basics of choosing which path you're going to take in life so when when i hear it back to the basics it's like get back to the simplicity of it let's not complicate it let's uh do better with the simplicity of it Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. It seems like that's my motto of my show, isn't it? Uh, why complicate it? Why not simplify it? And and pretty much everything in life goes back to basics. And that's what you and I are doing uh, to uh, show the world that, you know, we just need to simplify things. So the, the website name is Get Free and Stay Free. So explain that because it's a great name for a domain name, first of all. Right. So what it is, is uh, I collect stories of hope and transformation told only by those who were in prison. Okay. So what I do is after I collect these stories in a podcast similar to ours, I I'll take the transcripts and put them online. And I'm going to encourage audiences and, 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 and folks across the uh, United States to take the time to download and print these transcripts so that they can get into the hands, heart, and mind of those who are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the gist of what I want to do. Uh, the United States Department of Justice tells us that over 10,000 prisoners every week of the year get released into our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And whether we want to accept it or not, it's a fact. And then they also tell us that up to two thirds of them released will go back to prison within three years. Hmm. And so much focus is on that end of things. And of course, the negative world that we live in, we're attracted to negative news, unfortunately. But what if we were to look at the one third, if those numbers are even correct, and see what, how did they overcome? despite a system that is dysfunctional. Mm. So uh, being a, 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 in the 20 years in, a, in, in the prison, starting out as a corrections officer and then the last 15 years as a vocational school teacher, I've had the opportunity to speak to hundreds and hundreds of men for thousands of hours. And I, and I have an idea that makes them tick and what they need to to succeed and the simplicity, going back to the basics, if they just had access to stories that were told by men and women who went through the same experience that they went through and not some story from well, some well-meaning clinician or, or a bureaucrat or a counselor 
and, uh, and and I'm just convinced we can move the, the needle a little bit if we could just get these stories into there because anybody that works in corrections knows that there's very little positive resources within the, the walls of prisons. So RJ, uh, so let's come up with an example because uh, it seems like maybe I need to explain to my audience of what you are trying to do here. So let's say a person's name is XYZ, okay? okay? You get a file and you read his file and do you interview him about what, is, what has happened uh, to him? Or do you find out the background for him? How does that process, the uh, whole thing work? So I'm only interviewing right now folks who were formerly incarcerated. So I'm not in the prison systems actively collecting stories of hope and transformation by those who are currently in prison. Okay. I'm just collecting the stories, the podcast stories from those who are outside who have became honorable and productive uh, citizens. Mm -hmm. And then once I have that story, then we create the transcript in it so that the stories can make their way into the prisoners, mm -hmm. primarily the prisoners who are incarcerated now. Mm -hmm. But also, once the podcast is up and running uh, later on this summer, and uh, it'll also be interesting information through the podcast for those who have been released and they may be struggling out mm. there. They're, they didn't find that, that place yet and they're, and they're having a hard time. And then they hear another guy who got out two years ago or five years ago and, 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 they're, and they're just sharing that story that nobody uh, can share better than, than those who have been in prison. Yeah. So have you helped uh, certain people with this whole process of yours? I live it day to day for the past 20 years. I'm constantly challenging the men inside the prison to look outside of the system mm -hmm. and to look within themselves. Uh, I'm constantly challenging them and reminding them that, yes, society does need to step up to the plate, mm -hmm. but the man himself or the woman needs to step up to the plate as well. So and if we can get that one two dynamic, I think we can uh, I, I think we can move forward a little bit. And and when you say step up, you mean education wise or you mean system and law wise, uh, which which way step wise? Yeah, I'm talking accepting accountability and responsibility for their lives. I'm yes. talking I'm talking, you know, uh, to, you know, take take a hold of their life. Stop blaming the system. Uh, stop blaming everybody else. Yeah. You know, get over a lot of a lot of incarcerated men, um, especially many from urban areas, had had no father figure. So there's a lot of anger within the the, the, the the prison population. And to just learn how to deal with these issues, however way it'll be, whether it's through faith and God or or, yeah, or, I mean, Muslim or th th those kind of things. I, I mean, the stories that I've heard, uh, you know, on TV and movies and even on uh, uh, on the news itself, right? Uh, what I have noticed is one main thing that it, it seems like they don't have a role model to go to to uh, push them up as what you say, step up. I, I think that's where we're lacking as a citizen uh you know what do you think on that part do you think you, we're, we're we're doing it wrong when we're portraying it this way no actually you hit the nail on the head usually we pick up things from tv shows that are not uh, uh very accurate they're more dramatic yeah but you you hit the nail on the head that is one of the number one things that the men share with me is that there were no mentors there were no role models their role models were family members who sold drugs and their role models were were aunt and uncles i remember one guy told me several years ago i remember as plain as day he was in the hallway and he says mr sterling he goes you know what I, this is my third time in here i'm going to go back out there. i had my mind all set and i went back out there and i told my mom i was going to do this right and my mom said boy you better stop talking so dumb you know we need that money. This was his own mother. So that yes, to answer your question, that's uh, that, that's what it is. Uh, but as far but as, I uh, think mentoring. it's 
Yeah, but it's not really mentoring. It, it's also even family talking the same way, right? I think, um, you know, they need to help each other out too. But it is also the environment where they came from also, uh, which does not help the, the, the end result of, of that human being. Uh, but it is something that we need to change as a society uh, to bring a world in a better place. This is how I feel. I, I don't know about you, but I, I think we live in a so uh, um, an ugly world that we need to make it nice and beautiful. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's the right way to put it. Right. So, uh, yeah, exactly. And, 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 and it's the culture that they're raised in. They're raised in a culture that many uh, folks can't even imagine. And then they do their time and they get released and then they go into a society or another culture that don't want them for yeah. the most part, basically, a lot of times. Yeah. And, and, and two of the main things, I've done many surveys over the years. Uh, you know, uh, the 15 different resources that were on the survey, and I tell them to number them, one being the most important resource down to not the least important 15. And time and time again, the two main resources that men and women need when they get out of incarceration is housing and, and employment. Yeah. Um, and, and more so even housing. Employment isn't too bad because especially nowadays, but employment and housing and, and as a society, we don't want anybody in our backyard. We don't want a criminal or a former criminal next to, to our living next door, door to us is unfortunately the way a lot of us have looked at it. But the good news is criminal justice reform has take, the pendulum is coming back the other way. In other words, through the 90s and the, and the thousands and the 2010, we became, America became what's known as mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. Even though we're only 4% of the world's population, mm -hmm. we decided to lock up 25% of the world's prisoners. Mm -hmm. And and it was good for politicians. It was, it was very easy for politicians to go down the road of lock them up, throw away the key mentality, and uh, three strikes you're out and those kind of things. And unfortunately, it backfired. It was a social experiment that backfired to the point that we're paying forty to fifty thousand dollars a year to house an inmate, and we're and we're only spending eight thousand a year to send a kid through through the public school system. Yeah, yeah. So RJ, so here's a question. So let's say a person gets released, right? Um, I think it's a stigma that you know what he just came from jail. I think it's a bad guy. How do we how do we say that he is not a bad guy? He's already done his time. Why not give him a proper let's say I'm just hypothetically saying maybe a Walmart job or a, a quick check. You know, you know what I mean. Because but the thing is that they can't go there because there are certain restrictions when you leave. But I think he he has or she has done their time so don't you think we should be a little lenient to these people to boost up the the morality uh, because otherwise how are they going to go and get the housing or salary to feed them i mean they'll go back to the base same circle where they came from exactly and um and what's happening is the laws are changing with the criminal justice reform um, industry and the way we're redoing things, the word is getting out there more than ever. In the old days, uh, ex-offender, somebody getting out of jail, if an employer would look at it, the application would go straight into the trash bin. It wouldn't even get the light of day. Yeah. But because of uh, ban the box kind of laws, that's the little check mark, the box on there, do you have a criminal pass? Now there are a lot of cities and states and even the federal government you can't even ask that question anymore, and you got to at least afford the one-on-one -on -one interview process to take place. And then the hope is that the person interviewing sees that this is a human being here. Yeah. This, you know, maybe maybe he's not the person that he once was, which is the case a lot of times. And uh, so I think the uh, you know the narrative is getting better uh, than ever 
my only concern is is it going to go back too far the opposite way mm. where many things are happening in our you know in our in our nation you know there seems to be always one extreme or another extreme to yeah. things you you know so yeah. i just hope we don't go back to you know there, there, there are advocates out there that don't believe in any prison there should not be any prisons at all and of course that's that's just not uh you know the way to go because there are very violent violent people that need to be incarcerated and uh you know but a lot of there's a lot of folks in the prison system that really there'd be better ways of serving them and society and rj there i I think there's another point too let's say for example a person uh got sentenced for 10 years and they got early because of good deed okay don't you think that good deed should be like a resume and a transcript to the next employer when he goes out because he's done his good deed. And that's the reason why the judge or whoever, whatever the process is, says that, you know what, he's good to go and he's out in seven years. So he saved those three years of his life. Don't you think that should be a transcript? Exactly. Yep. So in other words, in the States that do, have sentencings of like you just uh, gave us a good example of if they got a seven to ten or seven fifteen, but they were able to get out on seven because they took all their programming yeah. because they 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 didn't have write ups, no misconducts. Absolutely, that in of itself should be a a huge reason to um, to to take a closer look at it. Also, here's an interesting insight. Unfortunately, the, the public or the potential employer can't gauge this, but as an insider of the criminal justice uh, in the corrections industry, uh, prisoners get paid anywhere between 19 and 42 cents an hour, maybe 52 cents, depending on uh, the type of job. And some of these guys have a work ethic that is unbelievably honorable. Mm. And they will move mountains. And if a potential employer knew that and could gauge that somehow uh, that would be uh that would be a very uh, uh you know valuable piece of information for them to, to go with there's a there's a roofer in the area that has about 40 roofers and he goes out of his way to look for men who get out of prison yeah. because they're more hungrier they're more uh um you know likely to to do to do well yeah yeah any any uh rj any interesting and celebrities uh in there that you uh, got to know and and got more stories out of or yeah um there are some interesting stories um there that you know as as far, as far as the celebrities go we've we've had our handful of of uh folks come and go but what's interesting as a story not necessarily on the on the celebrity end comes to mind is a, a, a guy recently wanted to get out of i mean he got maxed out it was time for him to go mm. and he didn't want to go yeah uh, and uh, when i say recently i i, I should say a little, a little bit a while ago and the, the the cert team had to extract that inmate out of his cell put him on public transportation and then go down to the city and he was so afraid of being in society that he committed another crime that would bring him back to prison for the rest of his life yeah. and that's you know that's a sad story as far as as uh you know institutionalization mm. because their life is so structured on the inside but uh when they get out there you know they're they're lost yeah as far as how to how to survive yeah yeah that's a that's a sad story but i'm i'm pretty sure there might be others which are also happy endings too uh at the same uh, time rj no no absolutely nope there's a lot of happy endings and that's why uh we got to talk more about those those uh one third that don't come back into prison uh just spoke to a, a fellow yesterday that was uh getting out today after 34 years in the prison mm. system and um he has a 30 he, a 34 year old daughter that stuck by with him right before he came to prison his daughter was born 
So she only ever saw him in prison and um, and he's going to go live with her. And the other um, encouraging story going on is that a lot more men themselves are becoming involved with bettering the system because they've uh, they become so passionate about criminal justice reform and doing better in their neighborhoods, especially lifers. The lifers are the ones who don't get out of prison unless the, unless that particular state has an early release program. But in a lot of states, when you get a life sentence, you you know you you, you pass on in the in the prison system. So they bring a lot of stability. They've accepted their fate, and they bring a lot of stability to the uh, prison population. And when the younger inmates, uh, incarcerated folks come in and they want to try to stir things up. The lifers will get them off to the side and say, hey, whoa, 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 no, this is, this is our home. We don't, you know, we don't, we don't do that here. And then they'll also take that opportunity to, uh, to, to feed them, uh, wisdom and, and to try to get them, um, you know, on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. So RJ, one, one last question, if you don't mind, do you actually think the, uh, the, the system is broken and, uh, or do you think there's a, uh, a loophole that we're, we need to crack and fix as, as what they call it? Yeah, no, nah, I, I think, uh, the system is definitely broken. I think the system is, uh, means well, Sometimes yeah. they try to they try to do the right thing, but because of lack of resources yeah. and uh, and many other things, but the system is definitely broken. And I encourage the men all the time because sometimes they get all excited when a politician comes in and and they're gonna you know tell this politician you know uh, their great ideas and how to make their communities better. And unfortunately, the politicians are more interested in that photo opportunity. And I, I encourage them all the time. I say, look, you, 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 we, we can't wait for the system to fix our problem. Fix our problem, right. You know, you know, we got to figure this out ourselves, even if it's some type of hybrid approach where, you know, but you just can't depend on the system. Unfortunately, the system is part of the problem and not the solution. Yeah. Uh, RJ, thank you so much for coming on my uh, show and making this bright uh, for me and understanding that, yes, the system is broken, but then, you know what, it's our job too, as a citizen, to give a little morale to, to the people, uh, um, or I should say the, the jailmates, or uh, I should say, um, any last words before we uh, let you go today? No, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. And, uh, if anything, I would just encourage your listeners to maybe think twice about the way that they may feel about returning citizens coming into their neighborhoods and that maybe it's worth giving a try. And I think, uh, you know, they might be surprised to find out that, uh, you know, that it, it, it's, it's a past that maybe we all in society should uh, take a closer look at. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again, uh, RJ, for coming on the show again. And uh, hopefully we'll meet again on, on my show and hopefully you'll come back again. Awesome. I'd be uh, honored to do so. And I thank you very much. Thank you, RJ. Thank you again. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, guys, we spoke with RJ today. We, we talked about the details of the jailmates and the jailmates coming out of jail. Uh, or I should say prison. I mean, whatever word you want to use, but I'm going to say jail uh, because it is a camp uh, with all the people who did wrong things. Yes, but they did their time. And when they did their time, they come out of jail. They come out of that campus and and they did. I'm going to say it over and over again, but it seems like it's a, re a repeated uh, record. But the thing is that they're people we should care for one another and that's what we're trying to do here so guys just give them a chance whenever they do come out yes there are certain times that it does not work but there are other percentage that it does work and why not help those per percentage so guys as usual as always there is a quote of the day in back to basics and here's the quote of the day the quote of the day is 
when the prison doors are open, the real dragon will fly out. And that's all there is. And that's what they do. They fly out to the world and change the world, or I should say change themselves to the new world for them. So guys, as always, what do I always say? Remember, everything in life goes back to basics. And that's what we did today. We went to the basics of this topic today. Guys, take care. God bless. Keep on commenting good or bad either way it'll make my show stronger day by day it'll give me good content good guest and obviously awesome post so guys take care god bless and i'll see you next week next week's episode on back to basics it was a place where people came in but now starbucks once wanted to create a, a third place yeah. a place where people could gather and you know not that that's off mission but they changed a, a bit in that process but where I think Starbucks got off mission and some of their stuff was a few years ago, they started pursuing things like selling CDs of Starbucks music yeah. and, you know, kind of got more into the product of, and the branding of Starbucks. And it's, it's a very interesting story. And it's just not just Starbucks. I mean, you can look at uh, and pick Apple. Apple's had some mission sure. drift over the years yeah. as well. Um, I, I mean, Apple is... Great